right guys, welcome back to Teal House Farm. Today we are going to render some lard, but we're going to do it um, the cheating way, I guess I call it. I don't know how to call it. So usually if you're making lard, you're gonna cut the fat off the raw meat. Uh, like you'll have butchered an animal and you're gonna take all the fat that was on the animal, cut it off the meat, you know, pieces. So there's not so much fat on your meat and that's what you would use. But uh, I made a humongous batch of pulled pork the other day, like made like 20 pounds of pulled pork. And so, um, after that was all cooked down, I did it very slowly in the roaster, in the electric roaster. And it had, I mean, it was almost to the top with just like the liquid and the grease and the fat. This is the grease and probably only about half of what's in there. So we're going to get the rest of it put in here. We're just going to put this in the fridge in this big pan. And so we're going to use that leftovers from from making that pulled pork, which you'd usually throw away, right? We're gonna actually render it into some lard to use for cooking and for greasing pans and, and cast iron and things like that. Grease is one of those things you should never ever have to buy. I have I have not bought like spray or stuff for greasing pans in since we moved here, like seven or eight years. The only thing I buy is Crisco, and the only reason I buy Crisco is for one recipe that I grew up with that just does not taste the same. It's a cookie recipe. It's gotta have Crisco, because that's how I grew up on it. That's the only reason I buy it. Other than that, we render our own fat, we save it from, we save bacon grease, we save beef grease, and now we're gonna save the pork grease and render it into some lard. Hold on a second. Again, so I slow cooked about 20 something pounds of pork roasts in a slow cooker. Well, not even a slow cooker, in my electric roasting oven, it took 12 hours. So the key to lard is low and slow to get really, to get that fat nice and melted without it turning into cracklings. I then drained it all off into this roasting pan and I put it in the fridge for a couple days because I didn't have time to deal with it. Now, this is not solid fat. What we're gonna find is liquid underneath. We don't want that liquid. So I'm gonna take the fat off top and put it in a pot on the stove and we're gonna get rid of the liquid. I also wanna add, you wanna make sure you use a non-reactive pot. If you can, so no aluminum, we're gonna use a stainless steel pot. Okay, so we get our pot out here and we're just gonna kind of roll the lard off the top. Kind of scoops almost like ice cream uh, to kind of peel it off this top layer. There's a real jelly-like substance underneath that's made from all the cellulose and gelatin, all the things that make up the tendons and things like that of the pig. And we don't wanna save that. We're gonna rinse off with cold water to get all that jelly substance off of our lard. Make sure you use cold or your lard will melt and that's not what we want. Then on the stove it goes. We're gonna do a medium low on our stove top here and we just wanna make sure we keep stirring it so that um, it doesn't scorch and really gets evenly spread across the heat so that it'll melt all down. Once it's melted into a liquid with no chunks left, we're gonna take it off the heat, let it cool just a teeny bit and then grab our jelly jam strainer and a Pyrex cup so that we don't accidentally crack anything or melt anything. Okay. We are gonna strain it now. So I have this, um, it's actually a jam maker strainer, but you can use any kind of strainer you have or a whole bunch of cheesecloth. I have a Pyrex measuring cup because it should be very heat resistant. We don't worry about it cracking. You wanna help me? This is too hot for little people to help with, I'm sorry. And this will help us get that real nice, pure colored white lard. There's just too much other stuff mixed in here. And so it's really gonna take that third that third heating to get it really purified. So the first one was in the roasting pan. We cooked it down, we drained it. There was a lot of just grease and nasty stuff left over, which was that jellied substance. And then we heated up what we could pull off and trying to make it as clean as possible, but there's still definitely residue in here and some pork pieces still, little ones that were stuck. And so we're gonna strain it. We're gonna cool it in the fridge just till it starts to turn white again. We can tell what is what and then we will heat it up one more time and then we'll be ready to um, put it up and we'll show you how we're gonna keep it um, for use. This is too hot for help, here. Watch this, ready? Okay, you sit right here. You got it, sit right there. Can you count for me? Can you count to 10, are you ready? One, two, Good job, we did it. We 
almost overfilled it. Okay, see we still had a good amount of separation, but look how nice and white this is looking. So one more trip here through the meltdown process and I think we'll have a really nice looking lard. Okay, while that's finishing up, which shouldn't take more than like 10 minutes here, remember low and slow, but there's not that much, so it's not gonna take that long. I wanna talk about preserving it. So, and the reflection on my glasses. Okay, <laughs> about preserving it. So. This is where it gets a little tricky because you'll meet a lot of different opinions. So typically when I try to give an opinion on things like this, I'm going to tell you what is USDA recommended because I feel like um, that is guaranteed to be safe. Now, is it the only option? Are there other safe options? Probably, maybe, depending on what you're talking about, but there's no scientific data. There's just anecdotal data like, oh, this is how grandma always did it to support it. So. When it comes to lard and to tallow, which is rendered beef fat, um, you, it's technically shelf stable without canning. It just needs to be kept away from oxygen. And the way that you do that is you pour it into your like mason jar type container while it's still really hot. And you wanna make sure your jar is warm as well, right? Don't put hot stuff in a cold jar. I mean, it might turn out okay, but there's a chance it'll crack your jar and how sad that would be. And then you just put the, the warm lid right on and you know tighten the ring on there. And that right there is gonna create the vacuum that you're needed to kind of seal the jar. Now, that's not pressure canning. You can't do that with everything, okay? Because some things have to be pressure canned to reduce and to kill off like botulism bacteria. But botulism can't grow in lard or in tallow. And so you don't really have to worry about that. Just to preserve quality, you want it to be away from oxygen when you're not using it. And so this method allows it to be sealed and put on a shelf and it should last you, you know, the timings are not specific. The USDA says use it within like six months to a year. And if you open the jar, you need to use it faster than that. Now, all that said is that is the instructions for what they call purified lard and tallow. And I don't know that I would consider what we're making here a purified lard it's going to be very close, but can I guarantee that it's perfect? No, I can't because I don't have a really fine mesh sieve or layers and layers of cheesecloth to put in my sieve that I do have to make sure that it is just absolutely the purest form that all the impurities have been filtered out. Now we are filtering. We've done this several times. So we're filtering. We're getting as close as we can get with my rinky dink makeup, right? Um, but can I guarantee that it's the purest form? No. Do I want to take risks with my family and my children? No. So the best way, in my opinion, to store this is going to be in the refrigerator, which should do it for a year, even if it's been opened. And if you were gonna make a whole bunch and we're like, well, I'm not gonna use that much lard in a year, you could also put it in the freezer, which gives you up to two years to use it. So those are some options. Now, I also do wanna make sure to mention, so we're gonna come out with what I guess is about a little less than two cups worth of lard from this process. And I made over 20 pounds of meat. It was, a, you know, it was making for a special occasion. Don't usually cook that much at one time. So making lard, you're not going to save enough grease, enough fat from, um, from just your regular cooking. But this is an example of how when you're doing like, you know, think about Christmas or Easter where you might be cooking just a huge batch of something, whether it's lard or it's beef, and you're going to get that harder white fat, you know, melting off of the meat that you could save. Those types of events or those types of opportunities are a great time to take advantage of these skills and to stock up a little bit. I don't use a ton of lard, right? Like when I'm greasing a pan, I might use like a teaspoon. So two cups, two, three cups of lard is going to last me a long time. So in that case, you know, this is absolutely worth the effort. This is going to go a long way and it's going to keep me from needing to buy any sort of grease. And obviously, you know, I save things like bacon grease as well. I do save the beef grease just depending on what I'm cooking. So and I don't bother to purify that. Um, if, if I purify the tallow, it could last a long time. The lard, though, I do did want to purify because I want to remove as much flavor from it as possible and to make it um, 
fridge stable longer. And like I said, it might be shelf stable, but I'm not going to take that risk knowing that I don't have the best equipment. So it's kind of your choice, what you feel comfortable with. The other question is, how do you know if it's gone bad? Well, it gets moldy. And so, <coughs> excuse me, if you see little green things sprouting on top or little fuzz balls on top of your lard, it's gone bad. And that's how you'd know. And of course, keeping it in the colder temperatures, like in the fridge, is going to delay anything like that happening or prevent it. So, all right, I think it's probably about ready. So let's get it ready to put in the jar. Again, we don't want to put it in a cold jar. So I'm going to warm this up just quickly. You could do it by boiling it, um, even just putting some warm water from the sink so it's kind of warmed up a bit. I'm just going to stick it in the oven for like five minutes on 220. That'll warm it up. And I would highly recommend that you use a wide mouth jar. You will thank yourself when you try to use the lard and you're not trying to dig it out of the bottom of a regular mouth jar, which you're not gonna be able to fit your hand in. So do use a wide mouth jar for this. And if you're not worried about sealing or shelf stableness or things like that, you could obviously put it in a different type of glass container. Don't dump it in a plastic container. It's still gonna be really hot. It's gonna melt your container. But if you're, if you're just sticking it in the fridge, you could use any type of Pyrex or glass container that has a lid that you have laying around. Okay, to finish it up here, we're going to put a towel down just to protect the countertop from the heat. And we get our jar out of the oven. It's warm and it's ready to be filled with our melted down lard. This time we're gonna use a wide mouth funnel and we're gonna use a fine mesh strainer, or at least the finest one I have. It's not quite fine enough for the job, but it does a decent job. Gonna fill that jar up and we're gonna put a lid on it and then we're gonna let it harden up in the fridge overnight and see what it looks like in the morning. Clean up a bit and then off to bed and we'll see what we have. Morning, I'm just putting breakfast on the table for the kids and I just wanted to show you we're all done. Look how nice and white-ish it looks. I will say it's not as pure white as if you bought it, you know, at the store or a butcher or if you had done it yourself from a freshly butchered animal. It's pretty darn close though. And this is going to make great pie crusts. It's gonna be great for greasing pans and keeping my cast iron nice and healthy. So I'm gonna keep it in the fridge. It should last me several months. And um, it was a little bit of work, but again, several months of use. And uh, I got two cups of lard right here. So it's pretty awesome. So anyway, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.